Isil from uh, Prague, from, and uh, his presentation is about the STOP VT trial, a multi center trial to evaluate catheter uh, RF ablation with magnetic navigation for ischemic ventricular tachycardia. Court, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of my friends and colleagues from, uh, from Leipzig, uh, from Pennsylvania, uh, from Indiana University, I would like to present uh, our uh, multi-center pilot study, which was uh, targeted to evaluate uh, the catheter RF ablation uh, using magnetic navigation, remote magnetic navigation system for treatment of ischemic ventricular tachycardia. So uh, in uh, the group of the patients after myocardial infarction, we know when le left ventricular dysfunction appears, then uh, these patients are in high risk. It's already set, set up and we know that in these patients, implantable cardioverter defibrillator, I mean ICDs, are really uh, indicated. There are a lot of data for that. And ICDs uh, proved to be very, very effective but still, the matter of uh, uh, some issues. So it's not only that they are a little bit expensive, they are also issue that the patients can get a syncope even with the ICDs. And um, some of these patients, despite the ICD therapy, they still can have sudden cardiac death. And uh, there are a lot of troubleshootings when you increase your rate of implants. And still the drugs are needed to um, treat these this, this patients. So um, the current approach now in like 10 years, because the first publication about substrate mapping using electroanatomical mapping uh, to evaluate the scar to be uh, able to to ablate or treat um, uh, unstable uh, tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia was published in uh, 2000. So it's like it, it was April 2000. So it's more than 10 years ago. And now we have uh, some trials, actually two main trials. Uh, one of this like SMASH VT trial, which I was really involved, and uh, VTAC trial. Uh, observed benefit of using catheter ablation of these patients after myocardial infarction. So it's very important to, to know. So the aim of our study was a little bit different. Because we know that the manual catheters are functional. And based on the mapping system and this fine manipulation with the magnets means that the catheter is manipulating by changing the magnetic field like you are, you can observe on the, uh, the bottom um, movie, uh, it's like cartoon. So the magnets facing the, uh, the chest of uh, the patient on the table and on the, on the tip of uh, uh, the catheter, there are like three magnets and so you can easily change from the control room, so you are not allowed to stay with the patient, so you need to be in the control room, so you can manipulate by changing the vectors, just like using the mouse, uh, the catheter position, which is really important. So in theory, the hypothesis was using fine mapping with this really good contact force, uh, creating better anatomy, a better map, better potential uh, voltage mapping, so the hypothesis was that we can improve, or if we could improve um, uh, the outcome of this procedure. So this is a <clears throat> hypothesis. So stop VT trial. Uh, uh, primary endpoint was elimination of VT inducibility. It was not randomized trial, just like pilot planned originally for 50 patients. And uh, we also plan to have a survival uh, without any VT in one year, and we now enlarge it for two years, and uh, the last patient was uh, done in June 2011, so I can present just like acute data. Um, so this is like multi-center global perspective study, 
I told you, uh, four centers, two from uh, Europe, two from US, and we used um, catheter Navistar RMT, thermocool irrigated by the saline, so it's like cooling catheter, which is uh, better for creating the deep lesions, or like more effective lesions, and uh, we also uh, targeted um, uh, uh, the procedure to eliminate uh, all VTs, not just like the so-called clinical VT, the most prominent VT, but all VT. So we tried in the end of procedure to have no inducibility. So as I explained, we have finally included like 53 patients, um, dominantly uh, males, uh, with really low ejection fraction. In average, it was like 33. Uh, uh, there are some drugs, like uh, uh, most of the patients were beta blockers. Also, amyl was allowed. So this is an example how we create uh, and how we can manipulate with the catheter. The red color in front is the uh, left ventricular apex with the scar. The red color is the scar. It's low potentials. So this uh, the, um, the, um, uh, the the red spots. They are the tags. We can tag actually the site of our ablation. And so we are clearly navigated by the scar to eliminate the inducibility of um, uh, all VTs. Uh, actually, uh, on the purpose, we mapped not just, uh, we not created just three dimensional uh, objects, but also we evaluate or we evaluated <laughs> the potentials in between our, in, in the scar. So then we really used high density mapping to identify the substrate. So in average, um, procedure time was uh, 247 minutes, but um, usually this procedure needs to have like really long floor time. But in average, for this very, very complex patients, uh, with this like more than like uh, whatever, four hours uh, procedure, we use only 16 uh, minutes. Uh, in the beginning of the procedure, we induce all the VTs uh, as possible. So we induce an average two uh, VTs per patient with um, this kind of cycle line. It's like milliseconds, 365. In average, the RF time was 47 minutes, means uh, the sum of application time. Uh, average power is very important to set up because the, uh, the lesion should be effective, should be transmural lesion. And um, so uh, in, uh, in final um, uh, status, we have only two patients. We need to convert it for this original manual cutter. So, so we couldn't finish with uh, uh, magnetic navigation, but we switched to the manual because we couldn't uh, eliminate all the tachycardias. But even with one manual cutter, we would not be able to, 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 to eliminate it. So, um, so it was a really tricky, uh, tricky patient. Um, so in the end, the targeted VTs, so all inducible VTs in the beginning of the procedure, we, eliminate, or we eliminated in 94%, it's a very high percentage, 94%. And I must say that um, that what is much more important that all VTs were like completely non-inducibility in the end of the procedure was among the 78% of the patients which we didn't reach even in the SMASH or VTAC study before. I guess, I assume according to the literature, this is the highest rate of non-inducibility in the end of substrate uh, <clears throat> mapping and substrate ablation. We have surprisingly no any adverse events, so we have no any tamponades, we have no any strokes. That was clear. Uh, and uh, so in the end, I can conclude um, uh, that these outstanding parameters of ventricle mapping, as I explained, uh, could reduce the fluoroscopy time first. Uh, actually, from our center, the fluoroscopy time is even 
uh, shorter. Depends on um, you know uh, the practice. It depends on uh, <clears throat> the operators. The effect of the, the procedure is really safe and effective, and it's easy to navigate the catheter. We always use transeptal approach. It was like used in 90 percent of the cases. And uh, what I think uh, it's very important message that this system, this remote magnetic navigation is potentially effective for VT ablation standardization. So that minimize differences or different approaches uh, in between us, between the operators. And for sure, the long-term effect of the VT ablation needs to be validated. Um, based on this study, and we need to wait a little bit for the follow-up, we plan to initiate randomized trial comparing directly manual versus magnetic navigated uh, uh, ablation procedures. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for presenting this very elegant method. Are there questions uh, from the audience? Could you tell us uh, what is the patient doing? Is the patient sedated during the, the sedated. procedure? Sedated, yeah. yeah. Any specific questions? Actually, this is uh, this study um, doesn't um, include really the sick patients. We uh, ex uh, in exclusion criteria we have like the, the for example uh, New York classification like four it's or three four is excluded. So low ejection fraction, but not like too much sick patients. Axel Viola, Intervention Lab Germany. Uh, how long do you have to train on the new system? Actually, um, there are several, uh, the several uh, robots, I mean, almost robots for catheterization now. Uh, it's not only Da Vinci, as it's well known for surgery. Uh, it's also some of uh, the catheter navigation robots uh, for catheter navigation. Uh, the Sterotaxis, the company produced this Niobe, to the name of uh, the system. The per, this, these are the permanent magnets. These are permanent magnets. The field is a 0.1 Tesla, which is really okay to get a good contact. We speculate that we need to have like more, like increase the field, but it's not possible because no, the isocenter in the heart is like fixed because you are using m permanent magnets. Uh, there are some other systems. Uh, this year, actually, actually June, a uh, new system was introduced during Europace, Europace in Madrid conference. There were li live cases from Madrid, Hospital La Paz, and uh, Professor Murino did live case using other magnetic navigated uh, system. Uh, which named Magnetex. Uh, they are using eight magnets surrounding the body, but these magnets are not permanent, these are electromagnets. And last system is r really electro uh, mechanical robotic system named uh, Sensei from Hanson Medical. But it's not a general pl platform because this is mainly used for atrial fibrillation. Okay, one. So uh, the question was how it's a uh, learning curve. Actually, this is uh, nice because my feeling is that if you are skilled for, um, you know, um, uh, for this catheter manipulation for ablation procedures, you need to assume that our procedures comparing interventional procedures like putting the stents, we are much longer. We, we stay in average like four hours six hours, eight hours. So it's comfortable to sit in, in front of the screen and uh, manipulate the cutters remotely. But it's not only, it's really fast learning curve. So within like 10 cases, 10 patients, you can manipulate with, with the catheter. 
Last question. Terry is from Berlin. Aren't you afraid that in a couple of years with this progress of automatization, the operator is not necessary anymore, the machine can do it all by himself? It's not true. I mean, you know, it's like a little bit uh, funny, but uh, <laughs> um, it's always uh, need to be driven by somebody. Um, actually, uh, it's extension of the previous question, because uh, in theory, if you have smart fellow, okay, he has no any skills with the catheters, but he's a good brain, he can make it because you no know, it's like bypass of this obstacle for him. Okay. So really the manipulation is not an issue. And it's, uh, also it's not danger because the catheter I didn't explain you, the catheter tape, I mean the part of the catheter, it's very uh, like you know like spaghetti, like warm up spaghetti, cook spaghetti. Okay, I think there are no more questions. Thank you very much for your...